Hey guys and dolls, welcome to the first official video on the Media Girl YouTube channel. My name is Kay Tatiana Salisho, a digital content creator and journalist and the blogger behind the Media Girl blog. Uh, mostly familiar to my Facebook fans, shout out to you guys. I just hit 7,000 uh, page likes the other day. But from now on, I will be bringing you guys a weekly entertainment roundup of local and international entertainment news on the YouTube channel. Where's local, you may ask? Well, if you're watching from a different country, local to me is South Africa. Africa. So I will be uh, alternating between South African and international entertainment news on the channel and this is something I've been doing for eight years. I usually do it for radio stations such as Power FM and 702 every Friday but from now on I'll be bringing you guys the exclusive on my YouTube channel. I have worked at places such as Tiso Black Star which owns the properties such as Times Live, Business Day and Soweto Live to name a few but I have also done entertainment roundups and commentary for shows such as Real Talk with Anele and Mzanzi and Cider. So you guys definitely are in good hands. So now I'm going to try and bribe you guys to subscribe to my channel by telling you who I am and hopefully you fall in love with me. But if you don't, I have a competition running where you stand to win a thousand rand makeup hamper. Don't worry if you're not into makeup, you can win it for someone in your life you know who loves makeup. But you definitely have to subscribe and comment below before the 31st of... Ooh, my bad <laughs> before the 28th of february 2019 and you could stand a chance to win a thousand rand makeup hamper consisting of some of the stuff i use to create the space now i'm no Michali, so you definitely cannot judge my makeup but i'm definitely going to be trying when i bring you guys the entertainment roundup each week first story I'll be bringing you is local to South Africa and it is the story surrounding the faked accident in a campaign where a local media personality Nomuzi Mabena collaborated with Volkswagen aka VW in a road safety awareness type of campaign in which they faked an Instagram live broadcast where we saw Nomuzi get into an accident live on her Instagram. A lot of people were worried after her best friend Rouge, real name Jessica Weddy, took to Twitter to share the video asking if anybody had heard from her as she was very worried about her. Um, the video didn't come with any trigger warning whatsoever and I guess if this thing really happened in reality it wouldn't have but for Barbara to be like reposting that you know it should have let us know that this is what we were going to see. I, for one, saw the video shortly after she posted it and I was very, very disturbed, as were many South Africans, but it quickly turned into a conversation, especially on social media, that this might be a campaign so people shouldn't feel sorry for her and pray for her. But those of us with a heart were actually worried. Until the next day, she came through and confirmed that yes, it was indeed a campaign with Volkswagen Drive Dry and Namuzi herself, where they tried to... Um, alert people to the dangers of drinking and driving. What we had then learned is that this was a campaign that was going on throughout December in which she was posting videos to her Instagram and Instagram stories insinuating that she was in various cases drinking and driving. I myself had not seen those campaign videos as I'm not like an avid follower of Nabuzi. I follow her and I see the occasional shot but I'm not out here stalking her and watching her live broadcasts. But then that happened, people have actually been complaining in the aftermath about the fact that they felt lied to, they felt fooled, that their prayers were wasted on someone who wasn't even in danger. And I myself am in that school of thought, but there are a lot of people who on the other side say this campaign was effective in that if this were to happen in real life, it would have played out the way it played out in terms of the campaign. So there are definitely two arguments to the side of the story. Um, other people have also said that there have been previous um, Arrive Alive and Drive Dry um, adverts, which are very jarring, but in those, you know it's an advert and you know it's an actor. So while it may disturb you, you're able to sort of dissociate from that. And that is another argument to be made for the new music video, that even though in those instances you knew they were actors, this made it more real. Where I feel that they missing out on unfortunately is that they're saying it's a road safety campaign and highlighting it as that but focusing on drinking and driving when in the event um, of the video itself it speaks a lot to cell phone use because even in the aftermath of the video before we knew it was a campaign a lot of people were like oh I don't want my cell phone near me when I'm driving so for them that is a very missed mark um, and still navigating through the campaign and trying to decide how I feel about it and which side of the fence I fall on but you guys should definitely let me know in the comments below how you feel about Nobuzi's latest campaign. So, I'm going to go to my sponsor and I'm going to go to my sponsor. How? How? 
Swarushekile ngingqaya kufsake hlanya wena. Sitawe nomsuni uyasitakele nje kahle kahle. Jama simo ha ha man shit. Papini udla ngale yante u eh mhlaba kazana our second story is a brief touch on the drama surrounding Pitch Black Afro and him being arrested for his wife's murder. The bigger conversation, surprisingly, we should all be shocked that someone was murdered and that a Guaito or rap icon was arrested, but lots of us are pissed off about the fact that he was named. Really, guys? You're not mad that he might have murdered somebody? Um, a lot of people have likened this naming of his to the case in which Oscar Pistorius was named after murdering his girlfriend in the early hours of um, Valentine's Day a few years ago. Um, in the cases such as murder and, and, and other criminal offenses that are not sexual offenses, and especially in the event that somebody is a well-known personality, their identity is bound to get out. Um, where publications who are reporting on this can now you know, kind of sort of get on the right side of the law is to kind of sort of wait and, and continue to refer to the person as a suspect. But if the competition is now beating you to it, everybody already knows who it is. So as much as we can try and remain on the right side of it, the identity is going to get out either way. If not through publications, it's going to get out through social media. So unfortunately, he had to be named, but he's a high profile person. It was bound to get out. Um, I'm gonna show how bad of a journalist I am right now and not remember the name of the soccer player who was recently arrested for running like a drug ring in the West Rand, but his name was out there within seconds. The only instance in which nobody's name can be mentioned is in the instance of a sexual offense. Until they have pled in court, you cannot identify the suspect in a instance of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and related cases. Um, especially in the event that it might be a family member close to the victim, it becomes easier for people to identify the victim, therefore putting a lot more of a burden on the victim by having their identity out there. And these laws exist to protect the victim in these cases, but that's the only instance in which you should name somebody. As for the shock factor, the dude might have murdered his wife. Can we focus on what's important here, guys? Now for some international news featuring two icons, the first being Michael Jackson and the second being Wendy Williams. But the stories are unrelated, so don't try and start to rack your brain and figure out how this might happen. The first story is the fact that Michael Jackson might now be getting named and kind of sort of exposed in a documentary or docu-series similar to the fashion of Surviving R. Kelly, where they chronicle um, the cases surrounding R. Kelly when he was accused of sexual impropriety and child abuse and pedophilia in various instances. Um, we aren't that familiar with uh, victims of R. Uh, well, I have R. Kelly on the brain. We aren't that familiar with victims of Michael Jackson, save for the people who are involved in the cases of pedophilia, of the young boys who laid charges against him for sexual impropriety during the sleepovers he used to have at his Neverland Ranch. But now that these people might be adults, it might be a different case and this docuseries might play out in a different way. Um, those of you who are saying he's dead and we should just let him rest people get tried for crimes all the time even posthumously and it's not even like he's getting tried for the crime it's just that it's shedding light on this thing why shouldn't it be why shouldn't light be shed on it now that he's dead also a lot of you are saying why is R. Kelly getting victimized trying to make it about the fact that he's black Michael Jackson's technically black, but he's also on the other side of the fence, so I guess it kind of sort of balances us out. And it goes in the theme of what's happening globally, where victims of sexual assault, rape, and related crimes are now feeling brave enough to come forward and have a global conversation and let people know that they're not alone, but also letting perpetrators know that this is not something to do. So I'm definitely willing to see this Michael Jackson docuseries, and I can't wait for it to come out. And I actually need to go and finish my Surviving R. Kelly right now. But before I do that, let's wrap up with the last story, which is Miss Wendy Williams. Those of you like me who love watching Wendy online will notice that she's been 
visibly absent from the online space and from her show, The Wendy Williams Show. Rumor has it that she's delaying this because her health has taken a turn for the worst in the wake of rumors that her husband was not only cheating on her, he got his mistress pregnant and that they're on the verge of a divorce. I honestly feel for Miss Wendy, but things like this happen. The only problem is she's so used to throwing the stones from her glass house and talking about other people's problems and now it's happening to her. I guess she feels a lot worse than she would have if she was a regular person going through all this heartache. My heart goes out to Miss Wendy. A lot of shit like this happens to regular people, but I'm sorry Miss Wendy, you gotta bring back the Wendy Williams show and soldier on. If your health is taking a turn for the worst, take some time out and don't entertain the bullshit, but hopefully you'll be in a good place to return to the Wendy Williams show. That's it for the first week of stories. I hope you guys enjoyed being tuned into the Media Girl YouTube channel. Now, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and comment on this video or the following videos in the next few weeks before the 28th of February 2019 to sign a chance to win that 1,000 Rand makeup hamper. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, be sure to check me out at Media Girl underscore ZA on Twitter and Instagram and at Media Girl Chronicles on Facebook.